Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on July 5th, 2023, recorded on 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including what to expect next for the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. It's relatively quiet for now, but how long will it stay quiet for? And a look at the upcoming systems in the Eastern Pacific Basin. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is relatively quiet across the basin for now. We noticed that there's a lot of dry stable air as indicated here by some of the reds or and kind of the oranges colors here. You notice this dry stable air kind of infiltrating the eastern and central part of the main development region with just a couple of tropical waves kind of scattered throughout another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa today. These waves will continue moving westward and impact the Lesser Antilles over the next several days. Heavy rainfall, gusty winds, the potential for flooding, kind of the usual, but no tropical activity is expected at this time, which is certainly some good news. Just something to kind of point out here, in the Gulf of Mexico, there's this little blob of energy right now producing some shower and thunderstorm activity with it today. This is not expected to develop into anything tropical at this point, but it is just something interesting nonetheless. Uh, this over the next couple of days will be generally moving in the general direction of southwestern and southern Texas. And this could produce some heavy rainfall, gusty winds, the potential for some isolated flooding in spots. But overall, tropical development is not currently expected from the system, but it still could bring some adverse impacts to portions of southern Texas over the next couple of days. And in the eastern Pacific Basin, we have a couple of systems that might end up developing right now a pair, one with a high probability of development over the next several days from this area of convective activity that my cursor is kind of highlighting right here. And then another area of disturbance that will soon follow behind that, and this system will generally track westward over the next several days. None of these systems look to threaten coastal Mexico at this time. So uh, right now, impacts to coastal Mexico are not imminent, which is certainly some good news. But of course, we'll just be monitoring the forecast to see if anything changes with that. But right now, no impacts expected. Something to take note of here, this is the European forecast. We're looking at the 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies. So we're looking at about 5,000 feet and the purple colors here, this indicates eastern these here and the kind of gray slash orange indicates more of a westerly wind component here in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet. Now, what we notice that is going through the next five days, there's generally anomalous easterly winds out across the tropical Atlantic. And this is indicated, or and this is going to be co-located rather, I should say, by and with a Saharan air outbreak event. And the Saharan air will eventually make its way into the Caribbean and all the way to the Southeast United States here over the next couple of days. So places like Florida, the Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, those places will see some Saharan air. So certainly if you're allergic, that's something to take note of, but also going to pave the way for some very nice sunsets. But over the next couple of weeks, this pattern stays in place and actually amplifies. So we might see a temporary cooling of the tropical Atlantic. And that doesn't really say too much because the, the tropical Atlantic is still very warm, so relative to average. So it's not really going to do a whole lot. You would need a lot to, to put a significant dent in what we're standing at right now. Uh, but this pattern slowly <clears throat> begins to reverse. And if you actually go out into the 10 um, you know, plus day range, we're talking almost at about uh, two to two and a half weeks at this point, to kind of mid to late July, we start to see a resurgence of anomalous uh, westerly winds. And this is echoed by most of the forecast models. So this would allow for a more robust warming event across the tropical uh, MDR. And also it relaxes those trade winds. It creates a belt of cyclonic turning in the atmosphere, more favorable for tropical waves. And so development chances after this time, I think really will go up as we start to kind of get back to more of a favorable 
uh, time frame and more favorable pattern for the Atlantic. So something else to kind of take note of here, this is the shear anomaly map and the reds indicate higher than average shear, blues indicate lower than average shear. And we notice across the tropical Atlantic and into the Caribbean, we have mostly on average, we have stronger than normal wind shear across the area. And this is expected to continue. This really won't change. And you can very clearly see the outlines of these tropical upper tropospheric troughs in here, very clearly marked out by the wind shear maps here. And even in the Caribbean, there is some response because of all the upward moving air across the tropical Pacific. And that's likely to remain the case throughout the next several weeks. But something interesting starts to happen beyond the 10 day period we return to a more less average, really lower than average amounts of shear across the entire tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean for that matter as well. And if we head out into the long range here, this is July 20th, this is about the 15 day time frame. And I know this is kind of a long ways out, but it is just interesting to see that the European ensembles, again, are generally picking up on lower than average shear across the tropical Atlantic by the time we get to the latter part of July. This also kind of coincides when we're expected to get another favorable pulse of the Madden-Julian oscillation and Kelvin wave to move through the Atlantic Basin. So in essence, you've got a, large, a lot of large scale ascent in the atmosphere. And when you have ascent, you need something there at the surface to kind of fill that, that void and so you can get these more robust tropical waves to, to, to actually then have a more favorable time to develop into tropical cyclones. So this is just something interesting. Again, it, it's not gospel and these forecasts will certainly change, uh, but it does, you know, have a little bit of interest here that by the latter part of July, we could be looking at at least a little bit more favorable environment for tropical cyclones to end up developing However, there's one key thing that's going to play a very significant role. Let's go ahead and talk about that right now. As always, the main inhibitor and one of the things that we've been talking about is the El Nino. And for that, we're looking here at the updated uh, sea surface temperature anomaly map from yesterday, July 4th. And we can very well clearly, 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 clearly see the warmer anomalies out here in the tropical and equatorial Pacific. And what this basically does is, again, creates a lot of large-scale rising motion over the eastern part of the Pacific and a lot of large-scale sinking motion over the Caribbean and tropical Atlantic. And so typically, in most years, we would have a very unfavorable, this would ultimately shut down the Atlantic Basin, and you really wouldn't see a lot of storms that year. The one saving grace, I think, or the two saving graces for the Atlantic Basin this year is this very cold or cool, it's not cold, but cooler than average to, uh, water temperatures out across the Baja Peninsula stretching all the way down to Hawaii and the very warm compared to average tropical Atlantic and more specifically the main development region. And again, this El Nino, what, what the full impacts are on the hurricane season are still yet to be determined. But the fact that we had two early season MDR storms does tell me that I think we're going to see activity be a little bit more on the active side than what we were first forecasting earlier in the season. So this is going to be something to, to kind of keep in mind. But the El Nino for sure is definitely going to be an inhibitor for how busy the Atlantic season can get. Because I think by later in the season, I think, you know, come probably late August into September and October, the Atlantic Basin, especially the MDR, is probably going to be on the shutdown there because of the larger scale atmospheric pattern with the El Nino that will soon take hold. Taking a look here at the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at roughly 5,000 feet off the ground, I just kind of wanted to look at something kind of somewhat interesting in the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of days. This little impulse of energy from a tropical wave that we looked at in the kind of the broad overview shot here, this impulse of energy actually does kind of spin off into its own kind of little area of energy 
in the atmosphere. And that's located right here by the 8th, so here in just a couple of days. Now, although this won't develop into a tropical system more than likely, this still will bring some heavy rainfall to portions of the northern island chain. And then, of course, into portions of the USVI and potentially Puerto Rico over the next several days. Again, not really expecting tropical development out of this, but with these impulses of energy, they will bring some of those more heavier showers and thunderstorms to the area. Certainly could bring some much needed rainfall to portions of the northern island chain, USVI, and Puerto Rico over the next couple of days. But otherwise than that, not expecting development at this given time. And then in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we've got these two systems that are likely to develop, or at least one that is likely to develop over the next a couple of days, according to the Hurricane Center. Right now, the GFS forecast continues to indicate that both of these systems will, in fact, remain well away from any part of coastal Mexico. So again, land impacts, at least as of this time, look to be relatively on the low side, but we'll be monitoring just in case over the next couple of days. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless to everyone. Stay safe out there. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.